Hi, my brothers and sisters. Also be from Agape Life Ministries. Today, I am super excited because I have a word from the Lord which is so potent that if you take this and I ask that you really open your hearts and take this word to heart and run with it, you will stand amazed at the outcome of it. Mm. So let's just pray. <laughs> Father God, I give you glory for the living word who is the Christ. Lord, and that you just put your anointing on this broadcast, Lord, that you speak through me. I give you my voice. I ask that you be glorified and that this word for Bring the fruit and not return to you void to anyone who hears this. I give you glory and praise in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. So it's so amazing how God um, lifts up a word and it just speaks to you. And this has been literally in my spirit. I It's like I hear it in my spirit for a couple of days now that it's just been so alive. And the, the word of God is alive. It's a two-edged sword. And as you receive that word, it might be just like I received it in the spirit. It might be as you read the living word, the, the scriptures, it might be... Um, that it comes to you through a broadcast like this, whichever way. When we receive the word, it says, um, be careful how you hear, because in the measure that you hear, in that measure, it will be added unto you. And those who have, it will be increased but those who do not have even what they have will be taken from them because they do not give heed to the word that is um, mark 4 24 so go and study that especially in the amplified the measure it says in the amplified the measure of virtue and study you add to that word that you hear in that measure it will be increased to you so what is this word? This word that the Lord gave me is in 2 Corinthians 1, verse 20. And I want to read it to you. It says, for as many promises of God as they are, in him is the yes. Therefore, also through him is the amen to God for glory through us to God. So it actually says, in Christ, all the promises are yes. He is the fulfillment of all the promises. But when we agree with his promises and we take it into our hearts, we say amen to it. And the yes and the amen together, I mean, God can speak a word and I'm not in agreement with it. It's not going to profit me in the least. But when I am in agreement, I say, Amen, Lord. Yes, I take this word. Now, this particular scripture, I, I mean, it's just like the promises of God are just jumping out to me since the scripture has been, um, as I say, say, lit up in me. So it is time that the Lord puts it in my heart and says, it's time that we step into all the promises of the new creation as sons of God. We belong to him. We have come into sonship through our uh, rebirth. We have come into sonship because we have a father. We can say, Abba, father and father God is so good. He gave us all these promises in Christ Jesus. Now, Ephesians 1 verse 3 says, all the spiritual blessings in the heavenlies are yours in Christ Jesus. Is that amazing or what? So in 1 Corinthians 
um, it talks about all the gifts, all the um, the gifts of the spirit. And he says in 1 Corinthians 14, pursue the gifts, earnestly desire the gifts, but especially that you can prophesy. Now, what is prophesying? It is saying what God is saying. So if you want it, you can have that promise, but is this usually conditions to it. So he gives the promise and he says, pursue the gifts, but especially that you can prophesy. And when you pursue it, why would he say pursue it if he's not going to give it to us? And then in Luke um, 1, 11, he says, when you ask a father of bread, he will not give you a stone. And if you ask him a, an egg, he won't give you a scorpion. How much more will our heavenly father give good gifts to those who ask him? And that also goes for the asking of the baptism in the Holy Spirit. You see, there's a, such a richness in the treasure house of God that we have already, it's available to us. It's our inheritance in Christ. But we need to step into it just like the Israelites crossed the Jordan and they stepped into the promised land. Now, when they did that, they there was a protocol. They followed the priests and the priests carried the presence, the ark. Now, we are called to be priests and kings unto our God. Priests and kings is Revelation 1 verse 6. And also 2 Peter 1, uh, 1 Peter 2 verse 9. You are a royal priesthood, a chosen generation. Wow. So now we, as born again believers, we carry the presence of the Lord. He says he gives us a comforter who will be with us and in us. That was a promise that's already fulfilled. So many of these promises, they are yes in Christ Jesus, but we have to say amen to it, to accept it into our spirit man and walk in the power of it. So it's like the whole Bible, this book is so full of promises. And if we just take it by faith, and you don't have to have big faith. He says, if you have faith, it's a little mustard seed. He will say to the mountain, and those mountains often um, include unbelief and doubt. Say to that mountain, be removed. And if you do not doubt in your heart, you will have what you say. Those are one of my special scriptures in the Bible, uh, Mark 11, uh, 22 to 24. So now to into this place and say, Lord, I just accept everything that you have for me. I accept everything. So in that agreement where your heart and your head is in coherence you see my heart has to agree with my head i can't say something just because it's i see it there but i don't really believe in my heart but the moment my heart and my head comes into coherence i'm coming into the amen to god and god gets glorified through it because while i'm accessing that which Jesus Christ died for. When we know what we have received through the blood of Jesus and the resurrection power, we will be living in a different state of glory. That's all I can call it, the state of glory. Everything is available. So when 
we see a scripture that is highlighted to us. The Lord is now saying, go and look for those promises. Go and look for those promises and say, yes, Lord, I agree with it because it's already fulfilled in Christ Jesus. And then cross over from unbelief to faith. Cross over from your flesh to the spirit. Cross over from the natural to the eternal. In the presence of the Lord, according to his word, which will not return to him void. So why does he highlight something to us? Because he wants us to come into that glory of that empowerment of the living word. And this is so beautiful. The word is alive. It is, the living word is Christ. It says in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. John 1 verse 1. So, and then he says, in him was light and the light was the life of men. So this word energizes us. It is empowering us with that promise. But then we have to look at the condition and fulfill the condition. For instance, and this is another one of my favorite scriptures. I love this. Um, as John 14, verse 21, he says, He who has my commandments and keeps them. We have his commandments. And the two um, that sum up all his commandments is love. Love the Lord with all your heart, your soul, your strength, your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. If I keep those commandments, this is what the word says here, and uh, I am the one who loves him. It says, he who has my commandments and keeps them. He's the one who loves me. Now listen to the promise. And he who loves me will be loved by my father. And I will love him and will manifest myself to him. Are we walking in that consistently? If not, just believe and access the promise. It says in verse 23 of John 14, Jesus answered and said to him, If anyone loves me, he will keep my word, and my father will love him, and we will come to him and make an abode with him. Ooh. He who does not love me does not keep my words. And the word which you hear is not mine, but the Father's who sent me. So if we don't love him, if we don't keep his words, then we do not become his abode. But if we do what he says, we become his habitation. And if you realize that and you start brooding on that reality, oh my goodness, it is so good. It is so rich. Lord, you're on the inside of me. You live in me, you move in me, and I live in you and move in you and have my being in you, in the abiding place. And then we have, this is just popping up in my spirit now. Then we have Psalms 91. He who dwells, or you could say abide, dwells in the secret place of the Most High. That means I practice his presence continually. I live there in the Shekinah, in the light of his glory. That word dwell, the, he who dwells, um, me, comes from the root word Shekan, which means the Shekinah light of his glory so if i walk in the light i walk in his presence in the secret place shall abide under the shadow of the almighty so is are you aware of it if it if you believe it are you 
consciously aware, oh my God, your shadow is overshadowing me. Then all the other promises of Psalms 91 come into effect, but not without fulfilling the condition. People claim promises, but they don't fulfill the condition. It's not going to work. And then they get mad at God. And that is something I will never understand because we need to walk in the fear of God. And if you do not walk in the fear of God, if there's not an awe in you for the, the creator God who loves us so immensely that he gave us his son so that we can come into this fullness as the body of Christ, If we do not live in that fear and awe, ask the Lord, ask him, and he shall give it to you. When the fear of God comes, you cannot question God. You cannot get mad at God. It's just not possible. Because you, you know of his greatness. He is so great. He is so Awesome. He is omnipotent, omnipresent, all wise. Oh, I just, when I start thinking of that, I lose track of what's going on here. So, as we respond to this word of the Lord, access the promises. Why? Because that is where all the blessings are. And you know that I realized that only two of the whole of Israel, of that generation, only two of them entered into the promised land. Ask yourself, have I entered in? Have I? Am I embracing all his promise, promises? Then I leave my old mentalities and mindsets behind. There's no room for it. I go on the living word of God. I go into the presence of the Christ because he is the living word. So we engage with Yeshua, the Christ, the living word in us, in oneness. And you know, just the other day, I realized in this one is, is the fullness of perfection. That is where everything is perfected. And nothing lacking. And we can come into that place because he says, Father, make them one as we are one. That's a promise. That's a place where we live, where we can practice that oneness. And be enlightened by the Spirit where he shows us the, the glory of that oneness. One in his love. One in all the fruit of the Spirit. One in joy, in peace, and long-suffering. Long all those nine fruit of the Spirit. So, you see... Step into the waters. It's like the river of life. Are we ankle deep? Or how deep are we? Have we really jumped in to the fullness of his provision? For your spiritual soul and your body. So the promise is right now. So if you believe, step in. And access it and says, I say, Amen, Lord, to that which you highlight to me. And now I'm going to really search out the promises in the Word of God and find that fulfillment in the Lord's living presence. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> it is glorious. And I, I just want to pray for everybody. Father, we just give you glory, we give you 
praise and I have delivered your word, Lord. And I trust you to just write it on the tablets of our hearts, Lord, that we will not waver, but that we will enter in by faith into the fullness of your provision. I ask, enlighten the eyes of our understanding that the scales come off that we realize we sons of the living God. And Father, as we mature in sonship, that this grace increases in us to walk in the manifestation of all your promises. I mean, it is beautiful and I would like you to ponder upon it and to really come in the strength of this word. God bless you abundantly and overflowingly. Amen. Shalom.